in love with the world? I mean, are you in love with the world? As Christians, you always ask two questions, right? Are you in love with Jesus Christ? Or are you in love with the world? It's one or the other. There's no in between. If you have more thoughts of the world, you love the world more. If you have more thoughts of Jesus Christ, you love the Lord more. It's as simple as that. However, when things are simple, people make it very complicated, especially when it comes to salvation. It's very simple. You and I, you know, we just accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. We don't have to do anything, right? If you had to do something to get your salvation or receive your salvation, then you're not saved. You know, it's not works by salvation. You know, our salvation is through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So after you get saved, you're put in a situation where in everyday life, you have choice to make. You could always choose the Lord Jesus Christ. You love him more, you serve him more, or you could choose the world and you love the world more and you enjoy the world more. When you look at this world right now, I mean, honestly speaking, I mean, how can you fall in love with this world over and over? How do you love this world? Some of you might have heard in Norway, supposedly very clean, very nice country, rich country, right? We have a missionary to Norway as well. In Norway, there was a crazy man who killed five people and hurt two other people by killing them through arrows and bow. So he just shot him with the arrow and with the bow and then, you know, arrow pierced the victims and then he died. Majority of the victims were, I believe, were, you know, women, female victims. Can you imagine? You walk out the door, you're out there, you know, minding your own business. You know, maybe you're picking up grocery, you know, you're picking up coffee, you're eating or just jogging and you know, exercising. And this crazy guy comes with a arrow and ball, and then start shooting at everybody. And there goes your life, and you're dead. And the system over there, they don't have death penalty. So you get 21 years in prison, and you have opportunity to be free in the society again, unless they deem that you're still a danger to society. This guy took away five people's lives, and then hurt two other people, and 21 years later, if you know, evaluators think that he's OK, and then he'll be out on the street again. And then you love this type of world. I mean, especially as Christians, you don't really think deep enough. You only look at just small, tiny pond, right? You don't look at the big picture. You just look at what's happening in your small world. And you're like, oh, yeah, you know, this world. I mean, I hope Lord comes a little bit later. You know, I'm enjoying this world a lot. I'm doing good at school. You know, I'm doing good at work, right? And I have a lot of friends, you know, and I need to get married. You know, my marriage is waiting. You know, I need to meet someone. I want to fall in love, you know, these young folks and old folks alike. However, when you think about it, when you really think about what this world is, it's an evil system. I mean, you live in an evil world system. I mean, when you look around, who controls everything that's happening? I mean, right now, the God of this world is the devil, yes. right? Yes. And behind all the decisions that are made is by, you know, dark forces, globalists, yes. however you call it all this pandemic going on, you know, all this craziness going on. And especially, you know, if you live in California, you know all the bad things start from California, right? You know, if you go to, if you go to like, you know, Bible Belt, if you come from California, they probably want to bring out their, you know, guns and, you know, shoo you away because they don't want that bad influence. But there are truths to it. You know, a lot of wicked things, right? You know, a lot of you know, measures yes. comes from California, and we can't deny it. But you love this world. I mean, think about it. 
I mean, sometimes you have to really, really, you know, be by yourself and think about where my love is. Right? We're not talking about, you know, this spiritual love. You always say, I have love for Jesus Christ who died for me, who shed his precious blood for me. It's just words. But your action shows all of what's really in your heart. I mean, think about it. Your actions speak louder than words as they say. Because everybody could talk the talk. But very few can walk the walk. You know, you know God bless you know, Brother Drake, right? He answered to the calling in the ministry. But there are a lot of people out there, a lot of Bible-believing you know, Christians out there who's called, but they never answer. And why? What's the number one reason? Because they love the world. They can't leave the world. They have a great job. I'm still going to give tie to the church. I'm going to participate in the ministry. But I cannot be sold out. Right? I can't go to that country, Lord. You know, it's third world country. I need a you know, toilet that flushes. You, know, you can't be out back in the world. Right? It's too hot. It's too humid. You bring out all, this, all these excuses. It's too cold. Why? At the end of the day, because you love the world more than the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have a prime example here. Two people I would like to look at. We have Demas, who forsaken Apostle Paul, having loved this present world. But we also have Mark, who is profitable for him in the ministry. You are one or the other. You're going to be Demas, who's going to forsake the ministry because you love this present world. Or you're going to be Mark. You're going to forsake the world, and you're going to be profitable in the ministry. And there are no guarantees, right? You and I should never say, I will never leave the ministry. I will never, you know, never, 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 and then... What you're going to become, you're going to become Demas. That's why you have to be, you know, careful. You have to examine yourself on a daily basis. And you should never say that, you know, I love the Lord so much that I will never forsake him. What happened to, you know, Apostle Peter, right? Right away. So I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't have that kind of heart where you love the Lord so much that you could, do everything, anything, give up anything for the Lord. But you have to have a balance. You have to think straight. Don't let the pride, your prideful ways get in the way of serving the Lord. Because once you feel like, you know what? I could tell people that I'm in the ministry of God. I do this, that, and that. And I'm proud of it. And because of that, I know the Lord's going to bless me. And because of that, people look at me. You know, it start becoming a popularity contest to you for some of you. Then what's going to happen? You're going to be Demas. When compromising situation shows up, you're going to fall. When things like money and fame comes along your way, you're going to accept it. And there's going to be a gradual fall in your life if you're not careful. Demas was in the ministry. I mean, he was he was big part of the ministry. I don't know about you. Some of you guys probably were never like Demas to begin with. Right? You really haven't done anything for the Lord. You are always in love with the world. I mean you're just you're just saved Christians. That's it. You haven't done anything for the Lord. You haven't passed out a track, right? You haven't witnessed to any soul out there. You haven't really prayed for anybody, right? All you want to do is, you know, gossip. All you want to do is critique other brethren. And all you want to do is, you know, talk about worldly things, right? For some, I like that. But however, for few, you are, are involved in the ministry. You're doing something for the Lord. You're out there passing out gospel track. You're witnessing, right? You're leading people to the Lord. However, you always have to look at 
why you're doing it. You have to look at your heart. Why am I doing what I'm doing? I mean, it resolves a lot of things in your life, right? As Christians, especially, you know, you say our goal is to glorify God, have a closer relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. It's a question that you have to ask constantly. Why am I doing what I'm doing today? Why are you here today in the first place, right? Are you here because your parents forced you to come here? Are you here because you have nowhere else to go? Right? Sometimes it's funny how people say, oh, yeah, you know, this is the best that I could find. I want to go somewhere else, but this is the best I could find. You know, it's other places like too far. You know, this is the best I could find, right? Why are you here? Are you here to listen to the truth? You know, have fellowship with Bible-believing brethren, grow, you know, stay away from this world for even just a tiny bit? Or are you here because for whatever A, B, C, D reason, that's worldly? When you look at Demas, and when he made the decision to forsake Paul, think about it. He forsook him, right? And then when you think about Apostle Paul, think about his character. The man never complained. I mean, he's, he's probably the greatest Christian, I mean, he is, ever lived. And when you look at him, he never complained. He was a soldier, right? And you could see probably if you were around him, you could see that he was man of God. And he truly cared for you know, his flock. He truly cared for everyone that's gotten saved through his ministry and you know, other ministries. I mean, he says, brethren, pray for me, right? Pray for us. And he, he didn't do certain things because he thought that would offend the other brethren. That's how much love he had for other brethren. And when you look at people that you serve the Lord with, and when you look at people that you follow, because, you know, God always puts a man in place to lead the flock, right? And can you imagine, because you love the world, you forsake that person who loved you, who still loves you. He gave all this to you. He prays for you and everything. And a lot of times, you know, we're talking about pastors, right? We're talking about pastors, missionaries, you know, you know who start churches out in the world. And as uh, members of the church, how would you say you're different than Demas when you do the same thing? Many times you forsake, you know, godly man for your love of the world, right? You're like, okay. Pastor goes, all right, this is, you know, best thing to do. This is the most biblical thing to do. And then you turn around and you do the opposite. Right? You hear all this preaching, great preaching. right? You, you hear preaching week after week after week. And you know, many topics, many expository preachings. You hear all kinds of preaching. But instead, you forsake those preachings as well. Many of you guys are just sitting here. It goes to the one, or listening in the internet, it goes to the one ear, and it comes out just like that. Why? Why is that happening? Because you love the world. There's no if and buts about it. I mean, you just got to admit it for a change, right? Why would you always want to justify your actions? You know, people who have defiled heart, people who have backsliding heart, will always find means of justification, self-justification to justify their sin, to justify your ways. Are you that type of person always looking for some self-justification, some ways to justify your sin? Lord, I had to love that part of the world because of the situation I was in. I was in a dire financial situation. How could I not do what I was supposed to do or what I did? 
What am I doing? What are you doing? You're just justifying your sin. Why? Because your mind is defiled. And at that point, you cannot discern biblical truth. You cannot discern this godly preaching, Bible study. When even God wants to speak to you, when God is speaking to you, when Holy Spirit is pricking your heart, you just deny it. And all you think about is what? Things of the world. You are dwelling in worldly things. You're dwelling in pornography. You're dwelling in demonology. You're dwelling in worldly things, left and right, lust of the flesh, useful lust. All these are just constantly going through your mind. If it is, then it is time for you to get right. If it is, you got to go to 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, his faith and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness, you got to start, examine your heart, examine your ways, think about how much you love the world. Just don't deny it. Don't tell me, because I know you're not Apostle Paul, and I know you're not, above all, Lord Jesus Christ. So some part of your life love the world on a daily basis. For some, you love the world in many parts of your life then you actually have to get on your knees and really get right with the Lord. Why? Because if you have a defiled mind, if you constantly stay in love of the world state, what happens? You cannot comprehend the things of God. That's why, spiritually speaking, you are just rejecting God's blessing. You know, God wants to bless you. However, because your mind is so defiled, it comes to the point where you love the world so much that you cannot comprehend the things. That's why when you see two people or group of people who's been in the church or who calls themselves a Christian for a long time, some grow and some stay the same. Some stay as baby and some becomes like a soldier of Christ. Why? Because certain people make sure that they don't let the world get in the way of serving the Lord. However, many people let the world get in the way of serving the Lord. Then what happens? You could check yourself. I mean, do you rejoice in the truth? Right? I mean, do you rejoice when you hear the truth? I mean, are you excited to read the Word of God, King James Bible, preserve Word of God? I mean, whenever you hear, you know, certain biblical doctrines, even reproof and correction in your life, do you rejoice? That shows that, hey, you don't love the world. You love the truth, right? And when you love the truth, what are you going to love, right? You're also going to rejoice in God's judgment. In this wicked world and in your own life, if you don't have God's judgment, what do you think is going to happen? It's like you're letting little kid just do whatever he wants. If you let, you know, as parents, if you let your kid who's like four, five, six, let him do whatever they want, what do you think is going to happen? Probably you're going to have a funeral service somewhere, right? Aren't you, aren't you thankful that God gives you opportunity after opportunity to correct your defiled mind and get right with the Lord. I mean, think about it. We serve an you know, almighty God who's fair, who's got to love, but who's also a jealous God. But he gives each one, you and I, man, grace and mercy to get right with him every single day. And if you love the world right now, it's time for you to wake up. I mean, you're going to forsake a bunch of people like Apostle Paul, who was a saint, who was a soul winner. And, you know, Brother Drake, you know, he was in the military service, right? And then you forsake a soldier. Can you ever imagine you're, you're out there in the battle, wherever you are, from the beginnings of the world, you're out there in the battle, and you have your own, you know, group of soldiers. I mean, you rely on each other for your lives. But 
you've forsaken. I mean, I think that's probably one of the worst things that a human being could ever do. Like right? forsake your own soldiers. But that what the demons do. He forsook Paul, who was soldier of Jesus Christ. And when you think about it, when you look at your own lives, when you forsake, you know, Jesus Christ, forsake people of God because you love the world, I mean, you're forsaking, you're like a soldier that forsakes his, you know, own soldiers. I think, I'm not sure it even happens a lot, but it might be very, very, you know, very little in those military world. It happens once in a blue moon. But why is it that, you know, in a Christian world, it happens all the time? Because you don't think like that. I mean, do you know that you're a soldier of Jesus Christ? Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's what Apostle Paul said. I mean, you're in a spiritual battle. I mean, whether you like it or not, when you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got enlisted in the army of Christ. And or sad thing is that you don't remember, right? Or you try to not remember. Man, this pleasure of sin is so good. I cannot, I cannot forsake this. Like I mentioned, we live in this world which is evil system. It's only temporary, right? No, Lord's going to come back soon, right? Looking at what's going on in the world, it's getting worse and worse. And he's an anti-Christian system, but you love this world. Can you imagine? I mean, everyone has mom and dad, right? Or at least you used to, right? Because you and I are here because we have mom and dad, right? Imagine you have a group of people who hate your mom. I mean, they hate him. They hate her. They hate, they hate her so much. I mean, are you going to be friends with them? Think about it. Just, just imagine. Okay, this person hates my mom, talks bad about my mom, at, at every chance, you know, defiles or says bad stuff. And then he has a, say, Social club. Are you going to join that club when you know who's running it? Probably not. Most likely not. Because, you know, you love your mom, right? We live in this world which is anti-Christian system. I mean, it's against Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, it is. It's against God. Right? Then, how can you love this world and things that are like in the world? These worldly things. Right? I mean, do I have to list everything? You already know. I mean, if it's not godly, it's worldly. Amen. Right? Then, if you love these worldly things, then just know for sure that you're like spitting on Lord's face. Right? Who died for you, who shed his blood for you. I mean, just like the hymn that we sang, Christ liveth in me, who's actually in you. Think about it. I mean, sometimes you and I neglect and just forsake that thought that Lord is in me. Yes. And how many things that you have done, that I have done, how many thoughts that you had and I had? Really, really forsook Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. I mean, even today, even yesterday, even day before yesterday. I mean, every day. Yes. And it's just like, wow, Lord, I love this system, this world system, which hates you, which defiles you, which cusses at you constantly. I love this system more than you. You're like, oh, I never said it. You don't have to say it. Your actions speak louder. Your actions say everything. You know, you and I should stop being, you know, just talkers because we could talk very well. You know? However, your actions really show who you really are. 
before you say, I'm not in love with this world, just look at where you've been. Just look at the thoughts that you've had recently. At the end of the day, you and I, as I mentioned, want to be like Mark, profitable in the ministry. There's good example in the Bible. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21. Look at which son you are. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 28. This is a parable of the two sons. Think about which son you are right now. Matthew chapter 21, verse 28. The Bible says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. That's son number one. Let's get son number two. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Which one are you? Are you like the second son who always says, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. You know, I'll do it. You know, I'm not going to be in love with the world anymore. You know, I'm, I'm going to love the Lord more. I'm going to do this and that. You know, preaching really convicted me, you know, today. So I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to. I'm going to really, really become a better Christian. I'm going to get closer to the Lord. And then you go home, you're back at it. You're the same. You love the world even more now because you got convicted so much that in order to justify it, you go deeper into wicked sin. Like if you did it once, you start doing it twice because you want to suppress that conviction. Or you want to be that first son. That we saw. You and I are all, a lot of times are like, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. You know, it's better, right? For us to admit our mistakes. Yes. You know, repent and get right and just go. You know, went is action. It's a verb. He did not ponder on it. He did not just sit on his behind and did nothing. And just being sorry for himself, he actually got him right with the Lord and went. Then as a Christian, as Bible believers, if you have been in the world, then you have to change your ways. You have to get right with the Lord. And you have to, instead of loving the world, this present world, you have to forsake it. Confess your sins, right? It's not like you're going to somebody to confess your sins. No. You go directly to the Lord and get right with the Lord and see which part has been hindering you from loving him more than the world. Get right and become like that profitable mark, like that son who repented and went. You do, know, you do not want to end up like the second one who always says, I go, sir. Lord, I will go, but went not. Let's pray. Dear Father, this world is an evil system, it's a destructive system, it's anti-Christian system, and it's only temporary, Lord. Help us not to lose sight of that. Help us to recognize that we're just here you know, as strangers, as pilgrims. We're here to do your work, Lord, leading as many souls to you, Lord, and edifying our brethren and getting closer to you, Lord. Lord God, I pray that all of us will recognize our shortfalls and yielding to this temptation and loving the world more than you in many, many occasions, Lord God. Help us get right with you. Help us to always have you as our number one, Lord. I mean, you live within us, Lord. How do we always forsake you, Lord? Shame on us, Lord. Help us to forsake the world and love you more. And I pray that you'll be with, you know, Brother Drake and his family, Lord. Uh, I mean, missionary, being a missionary itself is hard as it is, but with all these things going on in the world, Lord, protect them, provide them with all their needs, especially give them good health to go out there and do your ministry. 
be with Pastor Shrive, Lord. Please continue to be with him and his family, Lord. And anybody else, Lord, who's going through the physical ailments, Lord, please heal them according to your will so that they could do and serve you, Lord. And help us to, Lord, end up like Mark instead of Demas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone.